We're going to talk with our, our next guest. He dramatically turned his life around uh, from serving time in federal prison to becoming an executive chef at some of the top restaurants in this country. Please welcome to the show the host of a brand new show. It's called Flip My Food with Chef Jeff. Jeff Henderson is with us. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to find out all about what flipping food is all about. But we tell us your story because this is a remarkable turnaround for you. You, you found yourself on the wrong side of the law. Yes, you know, many years ago, when I grew up right here in South Central Los Angeles and San Diego, I made a lot of poor choices in my life. And I don't make excuses, you know. I've done some things that I'm not proud of, what led me to prison. You know, and I came from a, tra a traditional family in my community, a broken home, generational poverty, father and mother divorced when I was young. And during the 1980s, you know, drugs got heavy in our mm -hmm. community and went to prison. So it was a journey for me, but it turned out to be where I didn't get arrested, I got rescued. How, how, long, were you, <laughs> how long were you there for? Almost 10 years in federal prison. Wow. Yeah. 10 years. 10 years, yeah. What, what do you, how do you find people react? I mean, and you turn things around and it's all great now and it's a good, it's a happy ending, but the reaction that you get from people when they learn of your story. Well, it's interesting. I get it two ways. You know, I've done some things I wasn't proud of, and sure. I'm Can we ask continuing. Why you, why you went to prison? For drugs. Oh. I got caught up in the drugs and whatnot, and went to prison in 1988. And it was during my time in prison when I kind of had an epiphany. I learned to read. I went to school. Uh, first time I ever was told I was smart was in prison, and so it kind of became an adult timeout versus an incarceration, <laughs> believe it or not. Wow, what a great way to look at it. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't look at it like that at first. It was yeah. later in life <laughs> when I started to really realize that, hey, here's a time for me to rebuild myself and sure. figure out who I am. And I just took the gifts that I was naturally born with and uh, applied them to uh, learning and changing my life. Well, Chef, how did you get involved with food in prison? <laughs> Everyone always loves to ask that question. Let me tell you, it's strange. I never dreamt of becoming a chef. I wasn't one of those chefs who grew up on a farm with my grandfather, you know, harvesting produce or whatnot. I lost my job in prison, and the punishment was the dish, the pot and pan crew. And got in the kitchen and was inspired by a guy by the name of Friendly Womack and Big Roy. And they taught me how to cook. And, you know, food is the most important thing to uh, people who are uh, incarcerated. Okay, hang on a second. Hang on. Yeah, that's true. That is so true. How does prison food inspire somebody to come? Because we, I understand it's not the greatest, you know, square you're going to get. Well, I was in federal prison during the time when they called it Club Fed. And we were very passionate about the food we cooked. So whatever ingredients we had, we took pride and we put a lot of love into it. So I used to buy all the top ramen noodles because I wanted the seasoning packages. <laughs> so, yeah. so I could enhance my little food. And I also had a little catering business in prison. I cooked for a lot of the white collar inmates, the Wall Street boys. Oh, so they what? were elitist. They didn't want to wait in line to go to the chow hall. So I had a little cell catering business where I took chicken, eggs, and prison? onions. That's brilliant. I yeah. love it. Did you come up with that, or was that an idea already in place? No, you took it to it just came natural. You know, I've been an entrepreneur my whole. And when I was young, I, I worked at a janitorial. I worked with my grandfather. I was a number one newspaper boy. I was a candy seller. Just had a bad product. And when I got in the prison kitchen, people started praising me for my food, and said, "Jeff, you got to think about being a chef." Then one day I read an article in the USA Today about the top African-American chefs in the country. And I said, wow, brothers are cooking on a high. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I said, I got to learn some French and Italian cuisine, you know? So I, there it is. Well, not only did you learn how to cook in prison, you also met your wife. I did. How did, how did, you, how did you meet your wife? Well, you know, there, there's a culture of women who love men incarcerated. But my wife oh. isn't one of those. Uh, oh. So there she is. There. Where was this taken? Oh, wow. That was the day I was Beautiful. released in 1996. Oh. And actually, her uncle, who introduced us, was Friendly Womack. And we started corresponding, and she wasn't looking for a man or anything. She felt sorry for me. She said, Jeff, I can help you get a driver's license. You know, I had to get new socks, underclothes, all these different things. And uh, we started corresponding, and we kind of like fell in love, and I sold her on my dream. And now you guys are together. We're together. We have five kids. Oh, no. Nice. Yeah. Married 18 years. Wow. So, what? How do you tell your children of your past? How do you? How have you dealt with that? Well, I have an open book, and I believe in transparency. As a father, you know, I teach my kids when you make mistakes, 
these are the consequences and I made poor, poor choices in my life and I had to go away. So I use my life journey as teaching moments for my kids. I don't hold anything back, right. but it's never too late to turn your life around. It doesn't matter where you come from, what mistakes you made. We've all made poor choices in life and I just decided that yeah. I wanted to change my life. That is and look rude. how beautiful, look at that, your beautiful yeah. family. <laughs> look at that. Yeah. How many, are you cooking every night at home? How do you? Uh, well, my, well, I usually don't say this. My wife is a better cook than me, a home cook that <laughs> is. She's super good. My kids are vegan and my wife is vegetarian. Oh. So I You're do gonna make pork, right? I'm gonna make pork, <laughs> but good pork yes, that I is, know. yeah. I eat everything from the snooty to the booty, let me tell you. <laughs> now, I can't eat a lot of this stuff at home because they give me a hard time. But uh, yeah, I, I usually take the holidays, but me and my wife have a great relationship, but we don't get along in the kitchen. Uh, yeah. She's messy. Yeah. I'm organized, yeah. I'm a restaurant chef. So we split the menu during the holidays, and then we meet up at dinner time and we throw <laughs> down. So how does, yes. how does a chef like you who like who has this massive palate all of a sudden go, my kids are vegan, my wife's vegetarian, you're restricting me here with my creativity yeah. in the kitchen. Yeah. Well, I had to learn. I can make anything vegan. I can make anything gluten-free. It's all about the yeah. ingredients and the technique that you use and how you infuse flavor boosters, which is a big part of my new show, Flip My Food. I flip food and make it a little bit healthier.